Hi everyone, in this video tutorial I'd like to take a look at the Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction. So in this case here you're going to take some kind of aromatic group, in this case here we're looking at benzene, and you're going to react it with an alkyl halide. So that halide could either be bromide, chloride, or iodide. And you're going to react it in the presence of some kind of Lewis acid like AlCl3. At the end of the reaction you'll have your aromatic group that you started out, but now it'll be alkylated with whatever that R group is that you were hoping for, and then you'll also have a byproduct of HX. Now there are a couple of things that are really important to know about this reaction. The first one is you have to be careful of carbocation rearrangements. The electrophile that you make in the course of this reaction is a carbocation, which means that it can rearrange to a more stable carbocation in the course of the reaction. The second fact is you also want to know that you can have no aryl or vinyl halides used as your starting reactant over here. You can, however, have primary alkyl halides, and we'll talk about that as we move through. So let's go ahead and take a look at that mechanism. Okay, so now remember, whenever we're dealing with these electrophilic aromatic substitution type reactions, the first goal is typically to create an electrophile that is strong enough to motivate the reaction forward. Because remember, our aromatic compounds are particularly stable, so there has to be a really strong driving force to get them to participate in those reactions. So the way we do that is creating an electrophile that is very strong in its electrophilic character. So in the case of this here, what we're going to use is an alkyl chloride, and we're going to react it with a Lewis acid, ALC. So remember, Lewis acids are able to accept electrons, and that results in forming this complex right here. Now keep in mind that chlorine is relatively electronegative, meaning that that positive charge on it is not particularly favorable. So that's going to motivate this bond breaking and dumping both of those electrons on that chlorine. So we get this product out, but then we also get this out here, our electrophile, a positive charge or a carbocation. So what we want to do next is talk about that carbocation. Okay, so now before we take a look at the rest of the mechanism, I just want to pause for a minute and talk about the electrophile. Because remember, the electrophile has the potential for a carbocation rearrangement to take place. And that's something you want to be mindful of as you go ahead and predict your products. So let's see what I mean by that. Let's say that the initial uh, alkyl halide that you're given is this one here, and you're going to react it as we just did in the previous step with AlCl3. Remember, essentially what's going to happen is that that halide is going to be pulled off, and the adjacent carbon is going to become a carbocation. So this here is what I would form. So now what you want to do is pause and take a look at what kind of carbocation formed. In this case, because this carbon is attached to one, two other carbons, it's a secondary carbocation. So now what you do is look at the adjacent carbons to this one here that has the positive charge on it and figure out whether or not one of those adjacent carbons has the potential to make a more stable carbocation. So if I take a look here, right, we're not concerned because that's a hydrogen, that's not going to have the positive charge. If I look over here, this carbon is a primary carbocation. That is not more stable, so we don't have to worry about shifting down here. If I take a look at this carbon, however, I see that it has one, two, three, four carbons attached to it. So currently that's a quaternary carbon. So that carbon, because it has more carbons attached to it, would make a more stable carbocation ultimately. So what we're going to have happen then is a 1,2 methyl shift, where this carbon is going to shift its methyl group here from here over to this carbon on this spot here. So now that means then that when we've shifted the methyl, we have a new carbocation. And if we take a look at it, it has one, two, three carbons attached to it. So that's a tertiary carbocation. Tertiary is more stable because of hyperconjugation than a secondary carbocation. So that means that the major product of this reaction would actually have this group attached to the benzene rather than this group. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the reaction. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and take a look at that alkylation step. So what we're going to have is our aromatic compound, in this case benzene, and here we have our electrophilic carbocation that we made in the previous step. So what will happen is the pi cloud electrons can come and attack that group. Now remember that this is equilibrium because we are breaking the aromaticity of the benzene, which is not a particularly favorable thing to do. So now once we've done that, we'll see that the R has added to the ring, we have a carbocation, and the goal for the next step, essentially the motivation or the driving force for the next step, is to reestablish that broken aromaticity. So over here we have some kind of basin solution that will come and attack the hydrogen. When that happens, the electrons that are in that bond will collapse down and will reestablish aromaticity. And here we have our final product. 
Now on a practical note, one thing to keep in mind is if you are starting with benzene, this is actually going to be less reactive than the product that you make. So what you want to do is improve your statistics, essentially put in a lot more benzene than product that you would make so that you would have a greater chance of having this react than your final product. So that's pretty much what you need to know about the Friedel-Crafts alkylation.